awakening of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here. Every day on the Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 29 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds. Recoveries that, by the standards of modern medicine, can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health and nutrition or prescription drugs, we are here for you. Yes, I know it's tough out there. I know if you're sick, I know if you're dealing with a health challenge or a loved one is dealing with a health, cha- a health challenge, it can be tough. But we're here to help you. 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010 is our number. We can do this thing together. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear on the program, advertised on the program, or recommended on the program, you can call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470, or you can head over to my website, brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. You can purchase products right off the website. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off the website for a one-time $25 fee. You can earn thank you checks helping move the longevity products. They actually move them themselves, especially the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. You can uh, earn yourself some money or you can get your products at the wholesale price if that's all you desire to do. And if you want to purchase any of our Truth Skin Health products, including our Retinol 5% Gel, if you're dealing with dark spots, hyperpigmentation, wrinkles, or you don't want to be dealing with wrinkles, fine lines, if you have acne or a child who has acne, Retinol 5% is the way to go, especially with vitamin C, no preservative, no fragrances, no fillers, no wax, Retinol 5% Gel, as well as our Truth Serum, Truth Balm, and Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream. You can find out all about the products at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. I also have a blog, a skin health blog at truthtreatments.com. Also, my Facebook page, The Truth with Ben. If you head over there and you like the page, you'll get posts. We post on there once a week or so, once every couple of weeks. The Truth with Ben. That's my my, uh, Truth Facebook page. Okay. So... Welcome back to the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. Try to call in early so we can get to as many calls as possible. We've been talking about fats and the ketogenic diet and ways to leverage, to exploit, to take advantage of the fatty components of foods, fatty vitamins, phytonutrients, essential fatty acids, how to take advantage of these fatty nutrients for health. And this takes us to the science of emulsifiers and emulsification, which is basically the technique of bringing oil and fats into water and making them water soluble, bring them into the water phase or the water section of a product, making fats watery, making fatty material, water soluble material. If you cook a, a fatty piece of meat and at the bottom of the pan, you get a bunch of juice with a layer of grease on top and then you add an emulsifying agent or emulsifier chemical, then the fat disappears. Well, it doesn't actually disappear, but it blends into the juice. And this combination of three elements, the juice, the fat, and the emulsifier, is what is called an emulsion. On our last program, we talked about skincare emulsions. These are po- probably the most fundamental of all skincare products are emulsions, basically creams and lotions, which are typically 60 to 90% water with maybe 5 to 20% of an oil phase. So you got an emulsion is a cream or a lotion is an emulsion that's made up of water, 
oil, and an emulsifying agent. Just three things, basically, or three types of things. 60 to 90% water, 5 to 20% oil, and maybe uh, 3 or 4% of an emulsifying agent. If you look at an ingredient deck, and we should all be ingredient deck readers on our foods and on our skin health products, skincare products. You always want to read ingredient decks. If any, you're going to be interfacing or interacting with any products, you'll want to know what you're interacting with. For the life of me, I can't figure out why we don't read ingredient decks. I have some, I have some really smart friends who just think nothing of taking a skin product and rubbing it on their face or rubbing it on their skin. And these are really smart people. They never read the ingredient decks. Oh, but the doctor told me. Oh, but the commercial says... It doesn't matter what the doctor told you. It doesn't matter what the commercial says. It doesn't matter what the celebrity, which celebrity is endorsing the product. It matters what the ingredient deck says. It matters what's, what's on the ingredient deck. And understanding how to read these things is super important. So if you read an ingredient deck, the third or fourth ingredient on most creams and lotions is going to be the emulsifying agent. Things like, you'll see names like cetyl alcohol, steryl alcohol, cetyryl alcohol, glycerol monosterate, sodium lauryl sulfate. Sometimes you'll see something called a PEG, P-E-G. These are all, func- these, all these ingredients function as emulsifying agents. They have one end, like an adapter. They got one end that attaches to oil, another end that attaches to water, and the whole thing gets pulled together by the function, by the activity of this adapter emulsifying agent. But here's the problem. Emulsifiers, emulsifying agents, are active. They're doing something. They're aggressive. They're, act, they're active chemicals. And next to the preservative and maybe the fragrance, the emulsifying agent is the most problematic ingredient in creams and lotions. It's an active ingredient. It's doing something. Not something for your skin, something for the product. And cosmetic chemists have to be very selective about the kinds of emulsifying agents they use because of their potential for irritation. You can think of an emulsifying agent as a detergent. It's not quite as potent as a detergent, but it's along the same lines. If you stuck your hand in a bunch of Tide detergent and left it there for an hour and then pulled your hand out after an hour, it would be pretty irritated. That's what an emulsifier does. Emulsifiers are irritating. The action of pulling oil and water together requires chemistry. And when it comes to the body, and when it comes to the skin, which, you know, it's part of the body, even though we, we sometimes forget that it's a part of the body, you got to be careful with chemistry, particularly non-nutritional chemistry. Emulsion chemistry is very powerful chemistry. In the same way that the oil and water are pulled together in the cream and in the lotion, in the same way they're chemically manipulated and the emulsifying agent chemically manipulates the oil and the water, the same thing happens to our skin. That chemical manipulation that's taking place in the cream and the lotion is going to happen on your skin. And just like the oil and water get pulled together in the cream and in the lotion, the oil and water will get pulled together off of your skin. You got oil and water in your skin too. You got natural oil, you got natural water. Skin cells are made up of oil and water. And in the same way that an emulsifying agent will pull together oil and water in the cream or lotion, it'll do the same thing in your skin cells. And you don't want that. That's a disruption in skin chemistry that we don't want. That disruption in skin chemistry, that pulling together of oil and water on the skin, can get perceived as irritation, can get perceived as inflammation. And it's especially problematic for baby skin or for sensitive skin or for delicate skin or fragile skin or damaged skin. In a paper published in the International Journal of Pharmaceutics in February 2000, researchers showed that emulsifiers can cause significant changes in water loss from the skin. And that's a a classic marker of a a skin barrier damage. The problematic nature of emulsifiers is the reason why chemists can only use a tiny amount of emulsifiers, typically less than 3%. Somewhere around, 3%, somewhere around between 2 and 4% of a product is going to be the emulsifying agent. And the choice of the emulsifying agent is probably the most important consideration in the creation of creams and lotions. The emulsifying agent has to be strong enough to pull the oil and water together in the product, but not strong enough that it's going to cause irritations. Keep in mind now, we're talking about ingredients that aren't for your skin. They're there for the products. They're there for the economics of the product. Not for us, but for them. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back right after this. 
are back on the bright side. That line's open for you. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. 844-236-6010. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the program, please go over to my website, criticalhealthnews.com or pharmacistben.com. We've got blog posts as well as videos at criticalhealthnews.com and also at brightsideben.com or benfuchsarchives.com. If you want to purchase any of our Truth Skin Health products, go to truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, if you are asking yourself, why the heck would I ever put an emulsifying agent on my skin? You're raising a good point. You shouldn't. There's no really good reason to ever put an emulsifying agent on your skin, in my humble opinion. Truth Skin Health products, by the way, are made without emulsifiers for that reason. You shouldn't put probably 80% or more of skincare ingredients on your skin. And I know they're only in there in small amounts. That's, that's the, the legitimate, that's what they say. You know, oh, well, there's only in there, the preservative is only 0.1%. Never mind that the preservative is there to kill things kill cells. That's what a preservative does. You know, it kills cells, literally not being figuratively speaking figuratively or poetically here, literally. Oh yeah. They're bacterial cells. That's true. But there isn't all that much of a difference between a bacterial cell and, and our cells when it comes to killing. Emulsifiers too are irritating preservative or uh, fragrances and perfumes as well. The vast majority of skin ink, skincare product ingredients don't belong in your skin. And if you're asking yourself, why would I ever want to put that stuff on? You're right. You don't. Remember, most of these ingredients are not there for us. They're there for them. They're there for the manufacturer of the product. It's there to make your product, in case of emulsifiers, it's there to make your product nice and smooth and creamy. So it looks good. So it feels good. So it's textural. So it looks pretty. Cosmetic chemists are not biochemists. They don't know about the biology. They know about the cosmetics. It's an aesthetic issue. Skin, uh, the vast majority of ingredients in skincare products are aesthetics, which isn't necessarily a problem, ex except for the fact it's not doing your skin any good. Preservatives and fragrances and emulsifiers and waxes, and they're not there for us. Why would we put them on our skin? This is where it becomes important to understand how to read an ingredient deck. This is where it becomes important to just read the ingredient deck. Typically, in most creams and lotions, the first ingredient is going to be water. That's going to make up 60 to 90 percent of the product, or maybe it'll be a fake water or a, a, a version of water, like an herbal extract. That's a sneaky way that some companies will will disguise the water content. They'll say herbal extract of. That's just water, folks. Sometimes they'll say aloe. Again, 99 percent or 98 percent of aloe is water. So the first ingredient is going to be uh, is going to be water or something like water. Sometimes they'll put it in Spanish or in French to make it sound better. Aqua, for some reason. Then the next ingredient is going to be like an oil or propylene glycol or glycerin. That's kind of going to have a softening effect on the skin. And then the next two or three ingredients will be waxes and a thickener and then an emulsifier. And folks, that's about 96% of your cream and lotion right there. Water or fake water, propylene glycol, oil, glycerin. And then a wax, or thick, uh, wax and a thickener and then an emulsifier. And that's your skincare product. And it doesn't matter how expensive it is, how much you paid for it. It doesn't matter who the celebrity is who endorsed it, who the doctor was who told you to use it. 95 to 90%, 96% of your skincare, uh, your cream or lotion is just those five or six ingredients. And the same stuff that you're spending $200 for at your department store is what you're, it's basically the same thing that you're paying $10 for at Walgreens or at the drugstore. After that, you got, after your four or five ingredients or six ingredients maybe that make up 95 to 96% of the product, then you got a bunch of fancy buzzword names that, you know, people think mean something. Shea butter maybe, cocoa butter, maybe some herbs or a little smattering of peptides or vitamins. And then at the very end of the ingredient deck, you'll see your preservative. Your, first, you'll see your fragrance and then your preservative. Sometimes they'll, be, uh, they'll put several preservatives in there. Typically, the fragrance will be in there. It's like 0.2%. And then the, uh, the preservatives, anywhere from 0.1 to 2, 0.2, or maybe 0.3 or 0.4%. Another a classic example of emulsion cosmetic chemistry is in how we clean our skin. Cleansing products are, emulsif uh, are emulsifying agents, basically. Emulsification is very similar to the cleansing process. Remember, emuls emulsification is pulling oil and water together, and that's basically what happens when we wash our face, when we take a shower, when we clean our skin. 
Cleansing is a type of emulsifying action, and cleansers are emulsifiers. The, the ultimate cleansing emulsifiers are detergents, laundry detergents. Those are super powerful emulsifiers. And if you ever want to experience what it's like to uh, uh, the irritation potential of a super powerful emulsifying agent, take a drop of Tide and put it in your eye or take a drop of your laundry detergent, whatever it is, and put it in your eye. It's not going to feel good. You might get a significant burn. Now, don't do it. I'm just kidding, but making a point here. But that's what would happen. That's an emulsifying reaction. Cleansing is an emulsifying reaction. Cleansing pulls oil and water together on our skin because dirt tends to be oily, and water from the tap or water from our shower is obviously watery. What we call soap or liquid soaps or shampoos are a special kind of emulsifier called a surface active agent or for short surfactants surface active agent or surfactants and these are super active emulsifiers surfactants are way harsher and way more irritating than the emulsifiers that are in creams or lotions the idea being you're rinsing them off so you don't have to worry about the, the intense emulsification uh, powers of these things because they're going to get rinsed off if you ever got shampoo in your eye that's what if that's an emulsification reaction in your eye the eye is very sensitive. The skin isn't obviously not as sensitive as the eye, but that's the idea. This is why you have to be very careful when you shampoo your hair. This, by the way, is why you don't want to shampoo your hair a lot. You're emulsifying your skin oils or your scalp oils, and you're creating potential irritation on the scalp as well. And you definitely don't want to rinse, lather, and repeat, like it says on the on the uh, on the label of most shampoos. Rinse, lather, and repeat. What do you think that's about? That's not for us. That's how you, you buy more shampoo. That's called down the drain marketing in the world of skin, in the world of shampoo marketing. They call it down the drain marketing because most of the product goes down the drain and you end up buying more. There's lots of emulsifiers found in nature. It's not just in products, but also in nature. Citrus contains something called pectin, which is an emulsifier. Seaweed contains something called carrageenan which is an emulsifier. Sheep secrete, sheep skin secretes something called lanolin. That's sheep sebum, sheep skin oils. And lanolin also has some emulsifying properties. There are foods that are examples of emulsions. The classic example of a food emulsion is milk. Raw milk is a blend of, of fat and water. And over time, that fat will rise to the top. Some of you guys may remember when that used to happen. Cre milk used to separate out into its creamy layer on the top and, and watery layer on the bottom. The cream rises to the top, as it's been said. These days, that doesn't happen because of a process called homogenization. Homogenization is a type of mechanical emulsification. It's not a chemical emulsification. The things we've been talking about are chemical emulsifiers, but you can also mechanically emulsify things by crushing up all the particles. This creates a problem, actually, with homogenized milk. Homogenized milk is milk where the fat particles have been crushed up really, really tiny, and so that they, they disperse evenly with the, water po uh, with the water particles. Typically, water particles will be, or fat particles will be bigger, and they won't blend in with the water particles, but by crushing up the fat particles, making them small, it makes all the particles even, and the, the milk emulsion stays together a lot longer, but that creates a problem. Fat particles, well, I'll tell you about, I'll tell you about that when we come back from our break. 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. On The Bright Side, I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific, 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive page at brightsideben.com. You'll also find... The Longevity products on criticalhealthnews.com and pharmacistben.com and brightsideben.com. You can purchase any of the products right off the website. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off the website. And if you want to purchase any of our Truth Skin Health products, including our Truth Serum, Truth Retinol 5% Gel, Truth Omega 6 Healing Cream, and Truth Balm, all made with vitamin C. Retinol is made with a 5% retinol, no preservatives, no fragrances, no emulsifiers, no silicon, no oil, no wax, no nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want. And all, all four products will give you dramatic results and very quickly, within one or two days, you're going to notice dramatic results. And that's the mark of an effective skincare product. You know, talking about ingredient decks, and certainly reading an ingredient deck is important, but the ultimate test on how effective a skin health product is, is what it's doing for your skin. Or... How does your skin, what does your skin look like when you stop using the product? With a good skin health product, you'll be able to use the product and notice results in a couple of days. And long-lasting results, results that last even 
when you stop using the product. And results that begin to go away, results that begin to diminish over the course of time as you stop using the product. You want to look for changes in your skin. That's how the best way to assess the value of a skin health product. On the other hand, we don't, all, we don't always have a week or two weeks to make an assessment on a product, so read the ingredient deck. See what you're paying for. Are you paying for 96% water or 90% water? Are you paying for wax and thickener and emulsifying agents and preservatives and fragrances? Why would we do that? Aside from the fact they're not good for our skin, why would we pay for them? So we're talking about milk before we went to break, and if you're on hold, hang tight. We'll get to you in a moment. 844-236-6010 is our number. We were talking about milk before we went to our, went to our break. In the old days, milk used to separate out into two fractions, into its water phase and oil phase. The cream would rise to the top. And then over the last maybe 50 or 60 years, an industrial development kicked in called homogenization. And that's where the fat particles were ground up really small, so they would disperse readily with the water particles, creating a kind of mechanical emulsion. Usually emulsions are, are chemical emulsions, but homogenization is a type of mechanical process that has the same effect. It doesn't have as long-lasting effect, and over time... Milk will separate out over time, but it gives, you, it gives the milk a little bit longer life. It allows it to stay together longer. Well, here's the problem. When you homogenize those fat particles, when you basically grind them up so that they're super, super tiny, the, it makes it easier for them to traverse into the bloodstream through the intestine. And milk fat can get into the blood more readily. Um, this is the problem, one of the problems with homogenized milk is the fat globules can make it into the blood more effectively, and it's one of the reasons why milk is not such a great food, even though it does have some nutritional value, of course. Raw milk, in particular, has some really significant nutritional value, but pasteurization and homogenization, both these processes can create problems, and it's what makes milk not so great. In essence, milk doesn't really do a body good even though, yes, there is calcium and protein and, and, um, and phosphorus and other nutrients in milk, certainly. But a lot of the nutrients are destroyed by the, um, by the uh, pasteurization process, which is a, a super high heat process, and the fat particles are, that get homogenized can create problems as well. Okay, tomorrow we'll continue talking a little bit about emulsion chemistry, then we'll talk about one of the all-time great emulsifying agents that's super important for your heart, and for your brain and for your nervous system. And it makes a heck of a good skin health, skincare product emulsifier as well. 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to New Jersey. What's up, Lee? How you doing, buddy? Ben. Lee, what's going on, Lee? How you doing, How man? How are you? I'm doing good. Thanks for calling the bright I'm doing side. Great. I, I feel like I speak to you more off off air than on air. But anyway, we're buddies, um, Lee. I'm, I'm, I'm assembling my resume for you. I still want to be your intern. Okay. As soon as I take I, interns, I'm, you'll be at the top of the list. I, I'm going to keep making my pitch because you're going you're to bring back the apprenticeship. I appreciate Anyways, that. Yes. Uh, ben, just a quick question about uh, you always recommend taking digestive enzymes and um, apple cider vinegar and bile salts and lecithin and all these things to help, help absorb and digest the nutrients and fats. Uh, what about I? What, if I take probiotics, my probiotics with that, I like to take all, all supplements, try to take them at one time. Would, would the apple cider vinegar negate any of the, any of the effects mm, of the probiotics? No, not shouldn't. You know, probiotics can, can, can withstand a certain amount of acid, and, and apple cider vinegar is not really all that acidic. It shouldn't be a problem taking them all together. I don't see an issue. What kind of probiotic are you using? Uh, I'm switching off. I, I, I was using Garden of Life. I know you're going to say bioluminite, Lee. Yes, yes. I like the Garden of Life stuff. You know, do you know Jordan Rubin? You, you, have you heard of this guy, Jordan Rubin? Uh, yes. He yes. started the company, Garden of Life. He's since sold it. But after he yeah. sold his company, he got involved with longevity, and uh, he brought his probiotic wisdom, and he... I don't know if you know his story, but just for the listeners, if you know his story, I'll tell the listeners. Uh, Jordan is an absolute digestive system genius, and he healed himself of Crohn's disease very effectively. Really? Yeah. My he sister has Crohn's disease. She doesn't, oh, she doesn't you have a get, large intestine. She got you should, bag. You, you should get a couple of his books. One's called The Maker's Diet, and another one he has, oh, shoot, I forgot the name of it, his main book, and I forgot the name of it, but he has a picture of it on, on the top, on the cover, where he, he, you see his picture when he had Crohn's disease. He was like 20 years old or 21 years old, and he looked so sick. You, you want, it breaks your heart. And then you see another picture of him after he healed himself using probiotics, 
He healed himself with no doctors, and he's this strapping young stud. He goes from this guy who looks like he's dying to a strapping young stud in the course of a year just by using probiotics. He healed himself completely, and he ended up writing a bunch of books. He started the company Garden of Life, uh, which he sold, and now he formulates products for longevity, including one of the all-time great, great longevity products, which is the probiotic enriched cheese. He actually breeds cattle now. I mean, he's just an amazing, amazing human being um, and a very spiritual guy. And uh, you might want to get, you might want to just Google Jordan Rubin and get the Maker's Diet. And I just cannot remember the name of his first book, which I think is his best book, where he tells about his story. And if your sister has Crohn's disease, she should absolutely 100% read that book. Yeah, try. I, I wish we could go back and before they cut out her, her large intestine. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's a bummer. How old is your sister? Yeah, uh, she's 29. Oh, that's 29. tragic. How is she doing? She's coping. She's coping with it very well. She Good deal. It. She's incredible. She's incredibly strong. I guess that she's got a great spiritual nature, spiritual mental. That's spiritual, mental, thing. emotional, physical, right? SMEP, S-M-E-P. Is she on a probiotic supplement? She is not. She just started taking uh, these isotonic supplements. Um, Tell you what, Lee. Why don't you send me uh, send me your uh, mailing address, and I'm going to give your sister. I'm going to send her some Biolumin Nightly Essence on me. I'll send her a present. Oh wow, great! Thank you so much, Ben. Yes. Ben at, at KSCO or Ben at K- Ben at KSCO. Send me your mailing address or her mailing address, either way, and I'll get you a bottle of uh, the Biolumin Nightly Essence, which is now, by the way, called the Ultimate Nightly Essence, made with multiple strains of bacteria, lots of uh, lots of uh, billions unit, uh, lots of billion units, plus digestive enzymes, proteolytic enzymes, natto kinase for your heart, and something called C process. And by the way, I just did a video on probiotics. Uh, it'll be up on criticalhealthnews.com. Uh, it's a little short video on some of the neat things about probiotics, and there's lots of neat things. The gut's just coming out. The gut's the new the new thing now. And finally. Finally, right? But if you've been listening to the Bright yeah. Side, there's nothing new about it. All right, Lee, got to take a commercial. Thanks for calling, bro. Have a beautiful and day, you gotta man. Motiv- and you got to motivate, Ben. Take care. Take care, brother. Bye-bye. All right. If you're on hold, hang on. We'll get to you when we come back from our break. Got lines open for you. 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. Back on the bright side, I'm Pharmacist Ben. Got lines open for you. 844-236-6010 is our number. Hang on. I'll get to you in just a sec if you're on hold. From the Journal of the American Geriatric Society, March edition, letter to the editor. Apparently, uh, according to Dr. Yoshitaka Nishikawa from Kyoto University, uh, a 70, 71-year-old man who presented with lower GI bleeding, lower intestinal bleeding, three days after he had an endoscopy, he was uh, drinking stuff called uh, a, a drink, a special drink that they use to detect various anomalies in the intestine. It was an electrolyte solution. Some of you may have heard of this stuff called uh, uh, Go Lightly, it's called. And I don't know why they call it Go Lightly, because you don't go lightly when you drink this stuff. You go heavily really nasty emulsifying agent as it turns out it's a it's a electrolyte drink made with emulsifiers electrolytes suck up water and uh, the water gets dumped out of your bowels and it cleans out your bowels so you can have this this uh, procedure done this colonoscopy procedure done anyway the uh, mixture this go lightly mixture which if you've ever drank it is absolutely unbelievably hideous stuff is made with a peg an emulsifying agent a polyethylene glycol emulsifying agent. And according to uh, this doctor, anyway, writing in the Journal of the American Geriatrics Association, the 71-year-old man presented with lower bleeding three days after he drank the stuff. Well, no kidding. You're drinking an emulsifying agent and a very strong one, not to mention all those electrolytes. These pegs are one of the most powerful emulsifying agents that you'll find in skin health products. This guy was drinking the stuff. Anyway, just to show you the, uh, the intense nature of emulsifying agents. From the Journal of Dermatology, beta carotene and lycopene, both of which are phytonutrients, carotene phytonutrients, prevent dermatitis in mice. Yes. 
Oral administration of these uh, phytonutrients, beta carotene and lycopene, prevents rashes and dermatitis in mites. No reason to think that it won't happen, won't get the same benefits if we do it as well. If you have eczema, if you have psoriasis, if you have skin issues, dermatitis, you may want to consider upping your intake of fruits and vegetables that contain beta carotene and lycopene. These are red fruits and vegetables. Beta carotene and lycopene are particularly important for the skin, both of which get deposited in the skin. And guess what? They don't just heal your skin or protect your skin from rashes and dermatitis, but they also protect your skin from the sun. Yes, they're one of the nature's finest photoprotecting agents for the skin. Beta carotene and lycopene are found in algaes which live in the sun. There is a problem though with beta carotene and lycopene in these phytonutrients, and that is that they're fatty. Phytonutrients tend to be fatty. And if you don't have a gallbladder, or you have intestinal problems, or you're not processing your fats correctly, perhaps you have some bile issues, you're not going to get the benefits of these phytonutrients and your skin will be more prone towards wrinkling, more prone towards fine lines, more prone towards hyperpigmentation, more prone towards rashes and dermatitis as well, which is just another reason to make sure you are emulsifying your fats by using nutritional emulsifying agents, the most important of which we will talk about tomorrow as we continue talking emulsions, emulsion chemistry, all as it has to do with the ketogenic diet. I haven't forgotten about the ketogenic diet because if you are going to use the ketogenic diet, you want to know about these, which is a high fat diet, you want to know about these fat emulsifiers and there's some really, really important nutritional supplements that you want to take if you're going to go ketogenic. 844-236-6010 is our number. Steve in Pennsylvania, welcome to the Bright Side. What's going on, ma'am? Stephen? About emulsifiers and uh, uh, how are emulsifiers related to the, uh, the uh, uh, herbs are sa uh, saponification? Saponification? Yeah. Saponifiers? Yeah, because yeah, that's a good I, question. I, I, I re recently uh, been doing some research on that and I found that a lot of the, uh, the uh, 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 adaptogenic herbs like the ginsengs are mm -hmm. saponifiers. They, they saponifiers. Make soap suds. That's they make right. Soap suds. And also the uh, olive leaf uh, extract has saponins I, in it. I, I, uh, I had rinsed out a bottle of that, and it made so many bubbles. Yes, bubble. When you see bubbles, that's a, that's a typical sign of soapy. Saponification is soapification. Saponins are soap-like, and it's not exactly an emulsifier. Emulsifier is when oil and water is brought together. Saponification is when oil is brought together with something that's alkaline. So it's a, you know, it's in the sense that it's pulling two things together. It's similar to emulsification, but instead of an oil and water uh, combination, it's an oil and alkaline emulsification. So if you take, if you, in the old days, they used to make soap by taking uh, wood ashes, which were alkaline, and mixing them with lard. In fact, if you, you could still do that today. If you take anything that's alkaline and mix it with fat, you're going to get your own soap, or you're going to actually create a saponification reaction. This is how soap is made, and there's a lot of, it's very easy to make soap, and there's a lot, of, a lot of books out now, and if you go on the internet, look how to make your own soap. It's quite easy to do. It's a soapification or saponification reaction. In nature, there are a lot of these saponins, these built-in saponins, which are chemicals that can actually suds and, and things like yuck the yucca plant or the right. soapwort plant uh, or, uh, or uh, you mentioned ginseng, a lot of herbs. In fact, I would say most plants have, uh, have a, uh, herbal material, have some kind of saponins in them which can act like soap. And then that saponin, that soap, when you put on your face, will, bring, will act as an emulsifier. It will bring oil and water together. So the saponin will bring fat and alkaline, sodium hydroxide typically, will bring, which is lye, will bring those two together. And then in turn, that new product, which is a soap, is technically called a soap, will bring oil and water together. It's an emulsifier. So you can make your own soaps at home so by ben, blending I, any, I, any I kind apologize. of fat. I apologize. Yeah. I'm not talking about uh, topically. I'm talking about internally. Yes. Internally, it's a problem. Internally, they can be irritating. Remember, emulsifiers can be irritating, and internal saponins do have some problems associated with them. Remember, the emulsification process, these saponins will, uh, will have emulsifying properties. The emulsification process is something you've got to be really careful with. It's an, active, it's an active kind of process, and internal saponins, you know, they can create problems, internal ingestion of saponins. They're surface active. They can act like a detergent inside your body. Yeah, so, I have, a, I have a, a, a doctor friend of mine. He told me that is really, really bad problems with uh, 
uh, if you don't wash the dish soap or the uh, right. clo- clothing soap, he says it breaks something. I, can't, I forgot what he told me, but I think he said it It breaks the red blood cells apart, and it causes major problems. Yeah, but not, on the other hand, the uh, clean yucca, things out. The yucca, uh, I was, uh, my dad passed away, and I was trying to help, save him and help him. And uh, the doctor told me, uh, I found the one uh, doctor that uh, would uh, prescribe uh, uh, things for a feeding tube that you could put in a feeding tube. And he, I said, well, his kidneys are starting to fail, he said. And he said, oh, don't worry about it. Just give him this yucca extract, and all the, the kidneys will start to work again. Probably have a cleaning effect there. My, yeah. Maybe has a cleansing effect. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, a but saponin is what you make soap from. If you get the yucca plant, you rub that between your hands, it'll it'll, it'll flatter up the soap. Not not in, not really that great, but enough that you can get some cleansing power. Yeah, you can make your own cleansers with yucca. I, I've, been, I've been trying to experiment with yucca for a long time, uh, and also quinoa will do the same thing, and also. Uh, soap wart, but they don't really suds that well. And you know what, Steve? People love suds. Have you ever noticed this? Everybody loves suds. We don't, when in the skincare business, if you make a cleanser that doesn't have suds, you're not going to sell as much as a highly sudsing one. We're, we have this hypnotic condition idea that suds, the more some, something suds, the better, better off it is, better off, uh, the better the product is. As it turns out, that's, it's the exact opposite. You don't want a lot of suds. If you can find a cleanser that doesn't suds, and we'll talk about how to make your own one tomorrow, uh, that's the kind of cleanser you want. If you can clean without sudsing, that's going to be the, be- the most effective and the gentlest kind of cleanser. But people love suds. That's why I couldn't never I could never sell my yucca or my soap or cleanser because everybody wanted suds. But saponins can be a problem. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm wondering and, what the common uh, common uh, goal ground is between the uh, adaptogenic herbs, the yucca, which is good for internally and uh, in health. Uh, well, I don't know if the adaptogens have anything to do with saponins. Adaptogens are really fascinating, though. I love the word adaptogen. It basically means that if if your body's too hyper, it'll lower it'll lower it'll slow things down, and if your body's too hypo, it'll speed things up. It, it basically knows which way to go, and that's a kind of a cool idea. Adaptogenic herbs and ginseng's the classic. Ashwagandha is another classic adaptogenic herbs. Adaptogenic uh, herbs somehow know whether to upregulate if you need upregulating, or downregulate if you need downregulating. Yeah, Love that word. Is, all, all, all the uh, all the uh, herbs that they call ginseng's, there are adaptogens. They're not really ginseng's, but they're so valuable they call them ginseng. Yeah, that's true. There's only a couple of ginseng's, but a lot of herbs do get called ginsengs. Hey, I got to go, Steve. Thanks for your call, man. All right. Take care, brother. All right. That's all the time we have for today on The Bright Side. Thanks for listening. Check out my Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com and please sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team by calling 866-735-2470 for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a longevity business and you and I together can help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. Have yourselves a beautiful, spectacular, awesome day, folks. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now. 